Hello, I hope you're doing well. I know I am. This video is an exciting one for me because I am going to be exploring in a fair bit of detail my new design for Jogglebot. I am very, very excited about this design. I think it is pretty neat. I am, I think it's pretty good. I'm very, very, very keen to see it in reality. So another reason why I'm excited about this video is that I'm actually, I'm thinking of doing something new for this where I'm going to publish this video alongside two others. This video is going to go, is going to just be a very broad picture of what the design is and what the different elements are. So that way you can sort of like follow along if you just want to quickly see like a snapshot of what I've done. And then at the same time, I'm going to be posting two accompanying videos that will go into a fair bit of detail on each respective component. So there are two main sort of sub parts of this new design and those two videos will go into each of those in a fair bit of detail if you're interested in seeing them. So without further ado, let's get going. Here is a CAD model of my new design for Jogglebot. There is a lot going on here and it is probably going to be quite confusing to understand what any of this really is right now. But this is the, the big picture of what we're, what we're getting into. So now I'll go into a brief recap of what the objectives of this robot are and the general overview of what all the different elements of this design are. To best understand this new design, I think it's easiest to start by just thinking of what the robot actually needs to do to the ball in its entirety. So if we imagine the path of the ball, it first comes in, it then has to be caught by the robot, it then has to be moved by the robot to somewhere else, and then thrown, and then the ball will be able to carry on on its merry way up on its path until it next gets caught. So if we write it out, there are three main sort of stages that Jogglebot needs to be able to do. The first is to catch the ball, the second is to move the ball, and the third is to throw the ball. And if you think about it, catching and throwing is basically the same thing in reverse. So in reality, these two are basically the same, leaving us with only two key objectives. The first is to catch or throw the ball, and the second is to move the ball. For this first part of catching and throwing the ball, I've covered this a little bit in my last video, but in case you haven't seen that, here is a rough drawing of this design. And in a little bit of detail, the ball comes in and is caught by a carrier, and that carrier can slide up and down on some rods, allowing the ball to move up and down. And that whole carrier is supported on a platform. This is a little bit confusing to imagine with just this drawing, so let's swap over to the CAD model and hopefully you'll be able to understand it a little bit better from that. So what you can see here is a CAD model of the entire component that has the objective of receiving and throwing the ball. It might be a little bit confusing to see what's going on here, but we'll have a look at it in a bit more detail now. So here is the carrier part that has the objective of just receiving the ball into this little cup component. It's a little bit hard to tell that it's cupped. You can sort of see from there that it is. Um, that, has a, that will actually contact the ball, so the ball will land in here. This will move down to softly receive the ball, and then when it's time to throw, it will spring back up again and throw the ball out. That component is being supported by this space frame, which is just a really cool way of saying structure. <laughs> space frames are real things, and that is like a real term, but essentially it is just a a light, strong structure. So that's what that looks like. And these these black parts in here are what will interface with the legs, which is an, another component which I'll get to in a sec. So this has the job of supporting the carrier and put them all together, looks like this. So the carrier will have the job of receiving the ball and throwing it back up again. And the space frame part, all of this has the job of just being a really rigid, stiff structure to support this while it moves around. The way that this carrier actually moves up and down 
is via strings that are tied on to the little hooks here and they wrap up and onto this pulley and then down to the ground. If you're interested in knowing why the pulley is shaped the way that it is, then check out my previous video or the new video on this same topic and you can get an idea of that. But so that cable goes up and down. So what that means is that when this whole platform moves up, that string is pulled tight and will pull this carrier upwards. So that describes the catching and throwing part of Jogglebot, but what about the move part? Well, my new design still uses a Stuart platform in the same way that my old design did, and what that requires is having six linear actuators, which is just another fancy way of saying a motor that moves straight up and down. So for example, you might have the motor here, and then it will have some rod that goes in and out as the motor is actuated, rather than spinning like a normal motor does. It would have been great if I could have used commercially available linear actuators, but unfortunately I couldn't find any that met my speed and power needs, so I've had to design my own. So let's see what those look like in CAD. Here is just one of the six legs that the Stuart platform needs, and, what, and how this works is when the motor spins, this part here is a screw, and that screw pushes this up and down, and that gives me my linear actuation. And then to interface with the ground and the platform part, at the top, there is a nice little ball joint up here, which connects to the black cup thing that I showed previously. And down the bottom is this universal joint, which will allow the leg to move this way and to twist this way. And combining those two motions will allow the leg to move in any direction that I need it to. So putting everything together gives us this model here, where we have the six linear actuators and the top platform part. I would move this around and show you what this looks like on here, but my computer doesn't really like me doing that. It's, it's not too happy with having to compute where everything needs to go. So I'm going to try to do an animation that shows this all in motion before I publish this video. But that can be a little bit tricky sometimes in SOLIDWORKS, so we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, so the only thing that isn't in this diagram, in this, in this model right now, is the string that goes up from these hooks in here, up over the pulley and down onto the ground. But you can hopefully use your imagination to picture that being there. So that hopefully gives you a bit of an idea of what my current design is. There's definitely a lot going on, and what I just described then is just the tip of the iceberg of what all those different components are and how I arrived at, the, at that design. So if you're interested in learning more about either of those components, then check out the two videos that I've, that I've published alongside this one. I'll put some links somewhere on here. Um, and yeah, check them out if you are keen to see how those components work. I'll hopefully be updating you soon with some build progress of this design. And I've got a little bit so far, like for example, I've got one leg here, and they're pretty freaking heavy. Um, but I'll, I'll save all that for a later video, I think. Yeah, it's definitely been very fun to put it all together and see how things fit. Um, yeah, so I hope that you found that interesting. And if you, are, if you want to, check out the other videos. And if not, that's fine. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.